The Digital Photography Cafe show is brought to you by Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool for your camera. Welcome to the Digital Photography Cafe show. Join host Trevor Curran and Joseph Christina as they serve up the hottest photography news and commentary. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. This is episode 152. I'm Joseph Christina here with my co-host, Trevor Curran. If you haven't watched last week's show, I encourage you to do so. You can find it at digitalphotographycafe.com and our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash dphotocafe. Listen with the popular Stitcher, TuneIn, and Xbox music apps, or subscribe through iTunes or RSS. Hey, hey, Joe, we're back. How you doing? We're, we're back. We're here. How are you doing? Yeah, it's good, good. Episode 152. Wow. I know. We're getting up there, man. man time's going by. Chug, I'm chugging old. away. Yeah, that's right. Chug, 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 chug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So we got a bunch of uh, interesting things uh, this week for you guys. A lot of kind of cool stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think we want to start out with coffee. I know you like coffee. Yeah, I um, like coffee. And, and it's kind of appropriate to the Digital Photography Cafe show. So. Yeah. Not, not probably, you probably don't like it as much as I do and you probably don't drink as much of it, but no. uh, after your surgery and whatnot, you drink more probably than, than you used to. <laughs> that is true. Yes. Yes. Warm liquids in the throat really help. Yeah. So we, you know, I love coffee. I love, there's so many different ways of brewing coffee. Um, we have a lot of different coffee pots. There's drip pots, dip, you know, drip brewing there's all the way to using uh, your grandmother's old socks or pantyhose to <laughs> kind of put coffee through. And every nationality um, has a different way of brewing. So you can be uh, from Italy would be different than someone from Spain, which would be different from American coffee brewing, which would be different from the next person. So sure. there's, there's a, a hundred different ways of brewing coffee. Well, <sighs> there's a hundred different ways of taking pictures too. And uh, probably a million different uh, devices that you can use for taking the pictures. But it seems that a lot of people get caught up with that coffee maker, or in this case, with that camera or camera gear. Right, Tra? Right. Yeah, yeah. They worry in too much about the tech and all the latest gear. I mean, we've yeah. talked about this so much on the show. I mean, we, we report on a lot of news because you need to be in the loop. But that doesn't mean that you have to go out and buy all the latest gear or all the latest services or what have you that we talk about. You know, it's just to kind of keep you all informed. And that's what happens so much. You know, everybody thinks that, oh, wow, the new Canon just came out. I, I got to go buy it. You know, and then they, they go take a equity line of credit <laughs> loan and uh, go drop three, four grand for a yeah. new body when, you know, maybe you don't really need that. Exactly. You know, the, the camera gear is really not what's important. It's that wetware that's sitting inside uh the 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 brain there you know that that's yeah. the main that's the main thing it's just what you do with it i tell you what some of my favorite work that i've ever done was with my old um srt minolta 102 film camera so yeah. just beautiful black and whites that just i just love them they just came out great some of my greatest digital work was back on a 20d you know way back when a uh, sure. 30d yep. And even the old 1D that was 4.7 megapixels. But yeah, it just it just doesn't really matter the gear. It's really how do you feel and you know what do you do with it or how can you just exploit every single bit um, out of that specific gear possible? Because I tell you what, so many people are like, wow, wow that's an amazing camera. Jeez, look at the picture you took. Yeah. They yeah. really believe that it's the camera that's doing it, right? Right, right, exactly. It has nothing to do with the person behind the camera. No. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, people are taking amazing pictures on their smartphones, even on the tablets. You know, it's it's really not about the gear. It's all about your eye and the creativity and, and how you apply your knowledge of photography. And then, of course, you know, how to use the gear to its fullest potential. Right. So I think this week is probably a good week to do a little bit of a challenge for all the people that have been watching for numerous years now. And that's sure. just find your oldest camera that you can find. I don't care if it's film or if it's digital, it's digital, but find an old one. If it's digital, get those batteries charged up, 
throw on a, a lens or maybe it's a fixed lens, whatever it is, and take that camera out. Spend an entire weekend of just shooting only that old, old camera. Right. Then on Monday, take a look at what you got. And I guarantee you nine out of 10 people will find out that the pictures they took on that weekend, some of them are amazing and they like yeah. them better than some of the stuff that they've been doing over the course of the week or the month or the year with their high end $5,000 body, right? Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. Because once you've, once you've been, sh it's, it's all about experience. So you may have started with this lower end camera, but over the years you've been shooting a lot. You've got a lot of pictures under your belt. Maybe it's that you're hitting that, what is it? 10,000 rule, 10,000 pictures make you an expert. Yeah. You know, maybe you're getting to that point now where you're kind of really know what you're doing. Now you go back and grab this old camera again, it may take you a second to refresh on the buttons and the settings or, or what have you, but you know, you're going to start applying the knowledge that you've acquired over the last, you know, many years of shooting to this old equipment and you will most definitely get better pictures than what you were taking back when you were using it basically new. Yeah. And, and probably even better pictures than what you're doing with the gear that you're currently using. That's 10 years newer because right. what happens is, is you, we kind of get stifled by the equipment and we just think of it as, um, you know, this, this gear that we need to create photographs, you know, we need right. this and the latest and greatest is what we need to make the best photograph. And the bottom line is, is that's really not the case. The more bells and whistles that are on the camera is the more bells and whistles you need to know to be able to use it effectively. And that's why if I go to an event and someone says that and I said, you know what, you give me your point and shoot and I'm going to give you this 15 pound monstrosity. You yeah. take some pictures um, and I'll take some pictures with yours and I guarantee you I'm going to come up with better shots. The bottom line is, is yeah. these cameras have so many options, right? There's so many yeah. bells and whistles. That if you don't know what you're doing and you don't want to put it on P for professional, I'm yeah. joking there. Don't 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 write in. Yes, yes, um, no, it's not professional. Yeah. So you know, and if you don't want to put it in some kind of automatic mode, and even in auto mode, you still there's there's a learning curve to adjusting exposure. Yes. So there's a lot that goes on with these higher end cameras. When all that goes, um, now all of a sudden you're kind of that that need to try to know stuff inside and out is gone because it doesn't do that much. And right. now all of a sudden you can concentrate on putting a really good picture together, composing it well, making sure the light is right, not motoring through 50, 60 shots to try to get the best one and just spray and pray. Actually right. sitting there and think about each individual shot because maybe the camera takes four seconds to actually capture the image you know you hit the button remember the old camera oh, yeah you yeah. push the button you're like okay it's gonna go off okay hold it hold that spot hold it on. there there it goes yeah you know yeah um so yeah the, the the speed becomes less and less important and you just slow down and you start thinking and when you do your creativity starts flourishing again right. so a lot of times people just get stifled after a while using this gear because, like I said, you can motor through just a ton of shots. And what happens is us as pros, if we're not diligent about saying, OK, wait, 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 hold on. This scene is only going to need five shots. I'm not going to do 50, <laughs> you know, right, because if right. I do 50, I'm going to be sitting in Lightroom for 10 times as long as doing five. Do I yeah. really want to do that? Do you need is it to necessary? Do that? Right. Yeah. You know what? It's it's funny that we're you know we're talking about all this i just did a workshop for um this uh it's called a ladies retreat it's a local event it's all just women you know mothers daughters friends lucky and you yeah yeah <laughs> and they have all kinds of different workshops and i was teaching a workshop what i call fun with photography right it had nothing to do with gear the description said bring whatever camera you have your smartphone a point and shoot a dslr doesn't matter because we talked nothing about gear. I mean, sure, they had questions about gear and, you know, that's fine. I answered the questions about the gear, but it was about composition. It was about rule of thirds. It was about, you know, getting down low and getting in close, you know, to fill the frame. You know, it was those types of techniques. And there were really a lot of aha moments during this. Sure. You know, I mean, I'm sitting there with my big camera and I'm demonstrating with it and stuff. But then I pulled out my iPhone and did the same exact thing with the exactly. iPhone and showed them the pictures. Yeah, okay, maybe the DSLR allows me to get a greater depth of field, let's say. 
or you know, I can zoom in a little bit more because it's right. an optical zoom and not a digital zoom. But the photo on the iPhone that I took looked really good. Yeah, no, you know? absolutely, absolutely. I, I love that. It's a great way when we do any type of uh, seminar or any type of talk, being able to break yep. down um, break down these barriers. And by you taking that camera and saying, listen, okay, so this is the big camera. Let's put that aside and let's pull out your iPhone or right. pull out your Samsung or pull out your uh, Android phones, um, any right. kind of smartphone with the pho- with, that has a camera. And let's use that for like the next 10, 20 minutes and try to compose and, and, and work on composition, work on lighting, um, you know, there's a lot of things to be said about that. And I think this type of challenge really helps out a lot, and especially the pros out there. I've been doing this for a long time. And like you were saying, that 10,000 mark when you can call yourself a pro at something. Um, right. I think it was last year I hit just over a million, like a million one, a million two pictures. So that's you're kind a lot. of an expert a few times over, I guess. That's, right? a, that's a lot of photos, you know. And, um, and every single shoot is a learning process it doesn't yep. matter what it is so you know someone wants to 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 shoot something that's going to be in this really horrible horrible situation with horrible lights as a pro you have to make it happen yep. that doesn't mean that you need the highest end gear and you got to rent out all this pro photo gear, you know all of this stuff that that it's not necessary it's just knowing what to do to make it work the difference right. between a pro and an amateur is that the pro can make the photo work in any situation, whereas a right. pro am will need all of this other stuff to try to make it work. Right, that's really it. So yeah. challenge yourself. You know, challenge yourself this weekend. Grab your old. Um, you know, it is the holiday uh, going to be coming up, or already just passed, I guess it is. But uh, the weekend comes. Do a Saturday Sunday shoot. Monday develop and see what you get. And if you guys got some really good stuff with your um, iPhone or with like an old point and shoot, like an Olympus, you know, who knows from back in the day where you stick like two double A's in it, whatever. Right. Post, put them up. We want to see them. Yeah. Send we, us a link. Yeah. We'd send like us a them link. Out. Put them on, put them online for us. Um, put your information, put your studio information, your email address and whatnot. And we'll credit you guys. and We'll put it on the show. It'd be kind of a fun thing to do and see what people come up with, with these old, old, and don't forget to put what camera it came from. If yeah. It's yeah. Film, that's it's digital. Key. Yeah. It'll just be, it'll be fun. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we found another um, really good example of this type of creativity that we want to show with, show you guys, share with you. But you know what? Before we do that, Joe, let's take a quick break to hear from one of our sponsors. Are you frustrated with slightly out of focus images when you know your autofocus spot was dead on? It's simply not your fault. From manufacturer to manufacturer and even lens copy to lens copy, there are slight variances to the exact spot where light is being focused onto the sensor. Finally, there's a product that allows you to compensate for those variances and make sharper images immediately. Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool, is an absolute must for every photographer. If you want to make the sharpest images possible, then you need to take control over your camera's focusing system. With the Focus Pyramid, you can calibrate all of your lenses on your lunch break. The Focus Pyramid makes lens calibration quick and easy at an affordable price. So give your lenses a new lease on life and take your photography to the next level. Head over to focuspyramid.com forward slash DPC and get an additional 10% off just for being a show listener. Sorry, guys, we are back. So we were just talking about taking this challenge and challenge yourself to to do something creative that's kind of not um, the norm and using equipment that's not necessarily the best um, out there using some older type equipment. So we found a story that kind of relates to this in a way, and it's a really neat story. So what it is, is a couple of guys that they want to do this photo project and they want to take a picture of a car, right. but they want to do it differently. How many car pictures are there out there? Right, Trev? Oh, <laughs> Just yeah. God, endless. All over the place, right? Right. So they do this. So they, they have this idea. They're like, well, we want to shoot this car in the middle of this pond, ice pond, right? So the, it's got like three feet of ice on it. Right. And they want to shoot the car in the middle of the pond. So it's it's just an amazing, amazing shot, their final shot, and it's gone viral. So I don't know. You see this. And we're going to put this on the screen so you guys can actually look at it. What do you think, Trev? Yeah, I mean, the, the image itself is really cool. I mean, looking Gorgeous, at right? it, you know, it's one of those things that would be, 
you know, like a one in a million shot. I mean, it would be very difficult to replicate that and get or or to duplicate it, let's say, and get the right. same look because the ice is always different. So, you know, basically what they did is they, they drilled a hole in the ice and they had to enlarge it a little bit more, right? And they paid a couple guys to do it, like $15 or something. I don't know. Yeah. And, uh, and what they did is they took a dive light and put underwater to light up the ice from below. Mm-hmm. So you see all the stress cracks and, and all that stuff shining through the ice. And basically it's kind of lighting the car from the underside, it's creating this glow coming from the car, right? And uh, and then what they had like one single light stick, right, with a flash on it, a strobe on it, yeah. to basically light it from the top. And uh, you know, overall, the photo looks really cool. And yeah. it's, I mean, who would have thought to do something like that? You yeah, know, that's yeah. where the creativity comes in. And it's know? the it's the cost. You know, they these guys are on a budget, and yeah. they're like, well, we don't have a lot of money. They yep. figured out that they need a thousand looms. Okay, a thousand looms to be able to light the car from underneath. Right. Because they're shining through three foot thick ice. So they figure out a thousand looms. They go on eBay, they get this diving light. Um, it's under a hundred bucks, like eighty some bucks, I think it is. Um, so they buy that. Then they they dig this hole, right? Yeah. And the hole is not wide enough. And like you said, fourteen bucks. They ended up giving some guys, these passerby fishermen, uh, for is it 500 rubles, which was translates into 14, 15 bucks to dig the hole bigger with their equipment because they're, yeah, yeah. they're like a little digger just didn't do the job. Yeah. Their drill bit. Yeah. Make a big enough hole. <laughs> it just didn't yeah. make it big enough. So the guys drilled a hole for them and that's, that's their big, that's their big expense. Yeah. They ended up spending like probably a hundred dollars in the shoot. If you look at it, I mean, if you were a car company and you saw this shoot, you'd be like, I want this. I want to call these guys or a car company will go and try copying it themselves because right. it is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, so, it's really cool. I mean, and you look at it and you're like, the car almost looks like it's stripped into a background. Yeah. yeah you know, looks- so I mean, in theory, you probably could create a similar look um, in Photoshop, sure. you know, basically find some form of a pattern and, and, you know, skew it into position shoot a car on on white or gray seamless you know then silhouette that out drop that in there shadows highlights you know some glows and stuff and you could probably simulate it but the fact that they did it in camera is is really cool yeah and it it just looks absolutely so good so you know here's a here's an image that costs them one day the project costs them you know a day's worth of work and less than a hundred bucks. And they produce something that, you know, an ad agency would hire a, a photo team. <laughs> you know, right. they would rent a studio, you know, to put a car in a huge studio, like you said, with seamless yeah. and all of these lights, probably 10 grand worth of lights, 20 grand lights worth of lights. And scrims and all scrims kinds of stuff. Scrims and all, all yeah. kinds of diffuse, diffusing this and that and, yeah. and bouncing piece. Uh, Everything to make this shot just absolutely perfect. And here they come up with this shot. When you look at it, you're like, oh my God, this yeah. is amazing. And they did it for under a hundred bucks. So yeah. back to the whole point. It doesn't cost a lot. You don't need to have the absolute best gear. They're using a hundred dollars using a dive uh flashlight and, yeah. and and a single strobe on probably like a 12 foot um uh uh stand, and that's it. That's like the whole thing. Yeah. So you can do it. And that's what goes back to the whole idea we were talking about with challenging and challenging yourself with older equipment. Challenge yourself to come up with new ideas, not coming up with more of the same. Just that's because right. you see a car ad look a certain way, that doesn't mean that you have to do a car shot the same way. Why Why right. not do it differently? Do it something. Do it so that you, like these people, your image goes viral. People look at it and say, wow. That's innovative. That's creative. Yep. That's new. I love it. Not, oh, that's a really good shot. Well, that's it. You know, it's a good shot. Anybody can do a good shot. But to do something creative, innovative, something new, and something that stands out, that sets you apart, I tell you what, these guys, they're getting calls. <laughs> I sure. guarantee and you. And we're talking about calls. it. Other people, people are talking about it. People are blogging about it because it is creative. It's not just another car shot. You know, yeah. another, even another beautiful car shot. Yeah. It's it's definitely unique. Creativity is king. We've said that a lot. 
And, uh, it, you know, really here's living proof of it. Absolutely. Moving into more creative stuff. Um, this is an interesting story about this girl. Um, ever since she was 12 years old, she's been competing, um, in Ireland. Uh, this competition is, I think is brought to, brought to the, or I think it's a Texaco. Is that the yeah. one that actually puts Texaco it together? Texaco Children's Art Competition. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Texaco's Children's Art Competition. Okay. Yeah, so, they've been running that since like 1955. Right. So yeah. she's been doing it since she's 12. She's 16 now. And for every single year since she started at 12, she's won. <laughs> yep. I know. And now people are like, well, how is this? You know, what, what is that all about? How is this girl? When, if you're looking at the screen right now, you will know why. This girl is absolutely an unbelievable portrait artist. Unbelievable. The yeah, image she that, took this uh, reference photo and basically reproduced it in pencil right. as a pencil drawing, but with like hyper realism. It, it's almost think of like HDR in pencil. I right. mean, that's that's what it looks like. I mean, the the blacks are blacks, the whites are whites. It's got so much texture and detail and, and strands of hair and. I yeah, mean, it's, everything it's, is, is just it's down really to the cool. poor, down on, to the poor. I mean, guy. you see pores in this. So in this I think he's like a, it's a, it's a picture of like an old miner or, or something. So you can really see all the wrinkles in his face and all the yep. lines and the age um, and the wisdom in his face. Yep. Um, it's just absolutely gorgeous. And her, her rendition of it in pencil is just stunning. And the, the director over there at the National College of um, Art and Design so he said, he said, well, as one of this, this, this girl he's referring to as one of the most talented artists of her generation, this is yep. uh, in Ireland, and whose skill uh, could see her become the, the foremost portrait artist of the future over there in um, Ireland. And just to hear that from a director of the National College of Art um, and Design is just an amazing statement. So you can imagine the the jobs that she's going to be able to get um and at the just the young age of 16 i mean i know every crazy. time she competes she wins she doesn't lose <laughs> yeah, yeah you know she does not lose it's and, you just know amazing. and what's interesting too the the reference photo that she used was from a photographer by the name of james fennel right and uh you know we checked out his website because i've never heard of him before so i figured well let's check it out and the reference photo is under his portrait section. Um, right. You can see that there. And you can see the difference, obviously, between the, the photo and what she interpreted it to be through right. her pencil drawing. Um, right. Really amazing. But James has some uh, really great portraits on there. Being in Ireland and having that, that real location-specific feel, you know, the older homes and these big fireplaces and kind of this... Uh, you know, very country feel to it. Right. And as you flip through his portraits and look at the different thing, the different uh, artwork that he created, I mean, it really tells a story. I mean, he really captures the personality, the character of the subjects. And really, yeah. I mean, you really feel it. You know, you really feel it through the imagery. And, and this, you know, this is to be respected. I mean, this is what we should all strive for, is to convey that feeling, that story yeah. through our imagery. Yeah, his portrait, um, I deem it as more of like the things that I do as far as branding portraiture. Uh, right. It's not really just simply portrait work. It is portraiture with a twist. It's a way to convey who a person is through that single moment in time. Yeah, um, it's like I, storytelling. I do it all the time for uh, musicians. So I do a lot of album cover work. Well, the album covers and the portraits of those uh, musicians, either inside in the six panel digipacks or on the back or on the front covers or whatnot, those, those images need to state something. They need to say who they are or it needs to say who they want to be represented as, who they want to be thought as or whatnot. Right. So that image is so important that as I call branding portraiture, um, it's, it is, a little bit more than simply taking a picture. It's actually knowing the subject inside and out. So like right. when we do it, we will go and have tea or coffee or maybe a beer with the, with the say the musician and get to know who they are, um, what they like, 
who they want to be portrayed as, what right. that specific look is, or what that album is going to be about, and then make that image, that single image, associate, make it work. Um, and it, it's definitely a process. And that's when I see his portrait work, that's what I see written all over it. This guy, he obviously gets portraiture. And oh, yeah. he, he yeah. you can see each specific person and each image tells a completely different story. He's not there to mince, as we would call it, mince words, mince pixels. If it needs to be grungy, it's grungy. If it needs right. to be dark, it's dark. If you need to see all those wrinkles and not take them out, they, they're there. Um, you know, big props, um, my respect. I just, I really like this a lot. You guys need to go and take a look at some of his work for sure. Yeah, we'll have a link in the show notes. You can go check it out. So kind of following along this whole creative theme show, um, you know, we've been, we, we've been talking about these drones, these quadcopters, these helicopters and stuff. I like it. I like the RC stuff. I think it's really cool. And it's something that, you know, kind of, kind of gets me sparked and my creative yeah. juices flowing, you know, but, Absolutely. uh, so the, this, uh, photographer wanted to do something different, think outside the box right. and they wanted to photograph a skier um not on you know a regular populated ski slope but kind of you know out of bounds um at nighttime and what yeah. they did is they took this drone copter and mounted these high-powered led you know battery operated led lights to the bottom of it flew it up above above the skier and lighting the way lighting him and the way down the field you know down the slope Right. And they used another copter that had a camera on it as well. You know, they also had some, you know, off, off copter cameras yeah, like sure. along the path and stuff. Um, really neat. I mean, who would have thought to use a quadcopter or one of these drones as a lighting rig? Yeah, this was a big major feat. I mean, they had a red camera attached to that drone. Obviously yeah. that's a very expensive camera strapped onto yeah, one, yeah. Uh, one to the, on the follow drone. Um, the other drone was, like you said, carrying that that light. This is, I think, the first time that this has ever been done, if I I've remember when, when I was reading before, yeah. it. And uh, pretty scary. I mean, if you are the skier coming down in pitch black and that drone is lighting your way, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to be a good skier because if and that drone you, yeah. crashes or those lights go out, you got to be able to stop quick. You better stop and wait for, for something. So, yeah. <laughs> But it's really cool. And obviously, this is not similar to what we were talking about earlier with doing stuff on the cheap. This is a very expensive oh, project yeah. that they did. Yeah. But they thought out of the box, like you said. They're doing yep. things different. They're trying things new. They say these drones are like big right now. What can we do different with them? Everyone's using them for capturing real estate shots overhead or yep. or doing this, you know, X, Y, or Z. What can we do different? Let's drop the camera and throw on lights, you know, that no one's done that. Right, and right. and they did it and it really worked out great. We're going to run that that video. You're probably watching it um, as we're talking, if you're not listening. And it, they just did a really cool job with it. And it's just one of those things. I mean, you now have a GoPro, I think, in your possession. Yep. And pretty soon you're going to start playing with that, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. My RC truck is ready to go. I got a few big projects I'm finishing up now. But once I get a little bit more free time, I'm going to mount that baby up. My snow banks are gone. I was hoping to jump some snow banks this winter <laughs> right. with it and record it, but they're all gone. We got some uh, warmer weather in the Northeast here. So I guess we'll be doing some uh, grass right. burning yeah. instead. Yeah. Some, some mudding. Or yeah. I'll do, do some mudding. Yeah. Some, exactly. uh, yeah. That, so that'll be a lot of fun. Go through some piles of leaves or down the road or chase yeah. some dogs around or maybe chase one of those bears that you always have wandering around over there. Your yeah. dog's barking. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, something. definitely got the bear. Yeah, that's that's so. kind of crazy. But yeah, you're gonna have to play it for everyone once you get some good footage oh, yeah, definitely, together. Definitely, we'll that, run it on the show. That'll be cool. Um, if it comes out good, I'm gonna have to grab one of. Uh, uh, I'm gonna have to do the same kind of thing and see what I can come up. We'll have a competition. Yeah, because <laughs> I have a couple of RCs that I haven't pulled out in a long time too. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. It's good stuff. But anyways, guys, this is more of like a creative show and uh, kind of getting those juices flowing as so many shows that we do is a lot of newsy based stuff and um about products and new releases and just keeping you guys informed but this time we kind of wanted to talk a little bit about more of the creative side and and things that we can do to kind of spark that creativity when we kind of get bored and as time goes by it's just boredom sets in and what happens yep. is is it becomes status quo 
And yeah. it doesn't matter what you're doing. Uh, you know, the grass is always greening on the other side. You think that, oh, if I go do that, it's going to help or it's going to, you know, I'm going to like that better. It's not really that. It's just getting your creativity back flowing and back going. It doesn't really matter what it is. You could be a food photographer and constantly taking pictures of pieces of uh, fruit and and uh, dinners and, and whatnot. But once you get that creative um, juices flowing, you might come up with a different way of taking that specific food that will make it absolutely amazing. That's so, right. Getting those creative uh, juices flowing are important. And if you guys do any of that um, shooting from that challenge like we were talking about early, we definitely want to see it. Don't absolutely. forget. Definitely put that picture someplace so we can see it. Put what camera you use, your name, your studio name, your website. We want to give you full credit and put you onto the show. Absolutely. That'll be really cool. Yeah. All right, man. We got to roll. Let's get That's out it. of here. All right. So it's if people want right? to connect with you outside of the show, what's the best way for them to reach it? You can find me on Twitter, and that's at Joseph Christina, and that's Christina without an H. Great. And you can connect with me on Twitter. It's at Trevor Carter. That's right, everyone. We are out of here for yet another week. You can get all the show notes from this episode by visiting digitalphotographycafe.com forward slash 152. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Cafe. And we will see you next week. You've been watching the Digital Photography Cafe show with Trevor Curran and Joseph Christina. Subscribe to our YouTube channel with any compatible device by visiting youtube.com forward slash Cafe. Be sure to subscribe to our audio feed through iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, and Xbox Music apps or through RSS. Visit digitalphotographycafe.com for show notes and to connect with your hosts.